In this video, episode one, season one, we're gonna talk about installing the Visual Studio Code ROS extension on Windows and the Windows subsystem for Linux. They're actually done two different ways, but they're related, so we'll talk about them together. First, we'll talk about installing ROS on Windows, and this will actually go pretty quick. Uh, we'll, we'll speed it up so that you, we can get to the end pretty quick. Uh, so we'll start with uh, aka.ms forward slash ROS. We'll then install the Visual Studio Code ROS extension and show how to launch code and ROS for Windows. Uh, it's a little bit different than you'd expect, you, uh, but we'll show you how to do that. Then we'll install the Visual Studio Code remote extension pack and then install the remote extension uh, in WSL so that you can use it back and forth. Okay, so first let's go ahead and switch over to our terminal window. Um, I have a workspace that has been checked out and created. Um, however, I don't actually have ROS installed or the Visual Studio Code ROS extension. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with aka.ms forward slash ROS, and this is the Microsoft landing page for ROS. Uh, if you click Getting Started with ROS, it'll there's some information about it, uh, but it all ultimately links over to the official ROS page. As you go through the instructions, um, you know it does require a 64-bit uh, Windows desktop. Uh, this does work on Windows 11, which is what I'm using here. You do need quite a bit of space to install ROS and the dependencies and build tree. Both Melodic, Noetic, and Foxy distributed as Trackly does require Visual Studio 2019. Uh, this is related to Toolchain. Those code bases have been released for the last few years using Visual Studio 2019, so they do require you to build using those tool chains. If you do have Visual Studio 2022 installed, uh, that would be appropriate for future uh, solutions, and there might be a way to make it work, but it's not currently documented. This is the easiest way to work with ROS on Windows. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to install the Chocolatey Package Manager. Uh, there are multiple different package managers on Windows. Uh, Chocolatey is what the ROS uh, build system is, is released with. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it over here. Okay, and I'm going to get out of the way and let that run. So now that that is completed, we're gonna go on to the next step. Uh, this installing Git is optional, but you're probably gonna be using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that right now to install. Okay, so now that Git is installed, we're gonna go ahead and install the ROS Noetic build. Uh, so this will be focusing on ROS 1. Um, I actually already have ROS 2 installed, so uh, we'll demonstrate this uh, as uh, first. So first we're going to go ahead and create the Chocolatey branch if it doesn't already exist. We're going to set our Chocolatey install to that directory so it's carved off away from the rest of your environment. We're going to add the ROS Windows source. So this is where Microsoft hosts all of the Microsoft built code. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and install the ROS Noetic desktop full. Now that ROS has been installed, you actually will recycle your environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and close um, the window. Um, before I do that, if you actually wanted to install ROS2 at that time, you can just go ahead and copy this and paste it as well, and it will install ROS2. Uh, I am creating a, I have a Visual Studio community installed, so I will set up my environment using this command line. Uh, if you have other versions installed, I use the other command line. Uh, so what I'll do is go to settings, and you can see I have ROS Noetic, uh, and I did copy this and paste it into the general tab, 
uh, and I open on the workspace. In order for the this to take effect, we're actually going to recycle our window. So I'm going to go ahead and relaunch terminal under administrative uh, privileges. Uh, and I'm going to switch over to my Noetic. Okay, so if you do set ROS, you'll find that the ROS is configured. So let's zoom that up a bit. Uh, you can see that we have uh, Noetic uh, installed over here, and then you can also activate the Foxy environment in the same location. As I mentioned earlier, I have a robot that's been built um, for ROS1 and ROS2. Uh, this is hosted on Microsoft's repositories. Uh, in order to inherit the build environment, it's best to launch the Visual Studio Code extension from the terminal window. So I'm going to do code period uh, in order to launch it. So let's go ahead and switch over to just the terminal window. Okay, so now Visual Studio Code is launched. You can see that here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and turn on screencast mode. Uh, in this AI bot, we have a couple of ROS nodes, the follow me, some TurtleBot, uh, camera, Onyx model. Uh, this is a robot that basically will turn to point uh, at a person. But you notice that I don't actually have any extensions installed. So I'm going to go to the extension link here, and I'm going to search for ROS. Okay, so you can see the Microsoft ROS extension is here, and then we'll go ahead and click install. Now that the Visual Studio Code ROS extension has been installed, we can go ahead and recycle our window, make sure that it inher inherits the environment correctly. Okay, now you will notice that at the very bottom we have the ROS1 noetic has been detected for this workspace. Now in order for the Visual Studio Code ROS extension to detect this workspace, we actually do need to build it first. Uh, either that or create a .catkin workspace uh, tag in that environment so that it knows to, uh, that this is actually a ROS extension. The uh, other thing that's important is, is that we're actually opening the workspace as a catkin workspace so that it has a source directory and then all of your ROS nodes are inside of it. So now let's go ahead and talk about the Windows subsystem for Linux. When you install the Windows subsystem for Linux through the Microsoft Store, you're actually installing a real version of Linux that runs next to uh, and with Windows. The Windows subsystem for Linux will take care of things like file system mapping uh, and some types of hardware mapping, allowing you to uh, build and execute Linux um, code on the, in the subsystem, as well as potentially launching UI. So what we're going to talk about is running Visual Studio Code UI on Windows so you can take advantage of uh, various input systems, accessibility aids, and things like that, and connect remotely to WSL. So before we start, let's go ahead and show you how this works. So on your computer, you have two different environments. On one hand, you have the Visual Studio Code running on UI, the UI thread, and then you have the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, the Visual Studio is actually split into two pieces. It actually has a UI uh, process and a, a service process. That is actually can be installed remotely, uh, either in containers over SSH, or in this case, the Windows subsystem for Linux. When it does that, you actually it'll actually install the Visual Studio Code ROS extension in that service, and the extension acts as if it's running uh, on, a, on, on a Linux device. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to install that. So on 
To install the remote extension, go ahead and click the extensions and look for remote and you'll want the remote development package which includes uh, remote WSL, SSH, and container deployments. Okay, so after you install it, you probably want to restart Visual Studio so that it will uh, correctly launch that environment. Once the remote extension has been installed, it's best to actually recycle this window uh, and so that the remote extension is picked up correctly. You'll notice now that you actually have a new affordance down at the bottom here. Uh, this is your remote connection. So if you click on it, you'll see you have options for WSL, SSH, and containers. We're going to actually focus on the WSL one. So you can do new WSL window uh, if you only have one distribution or you want to use your default one. If you have multiple, you can use the second one. So now I've actually opened up a new window. in WSL. Now if you look at the remote the extensions here, you have the remote extensions uh, and you have the option to install uh, other extensions. Okay, so what you want to do is you'll come and hit the install in WSL. Okay, so now it's actually installing both the ROS extension and the C++ environment remotely in WSL. Now if you want to debug, you're actually going to need to ensure that w, the WSL system has uh, both the build environment as well as uh, the debugger um, in order for Visual Studio to be able to find the uh, GDB. But now you'll actually see that uh, now that the um, ROS has been installed, you're going to want to recycle the window again and make sure it's picked up. Okay, so now that I've recycled the window, I'm going to go and open a workspace on the WSL side. So I use the open folder. You can see we're connected to the uh, WSL remotely. I'm going to open up my TurtleBot 3 workspace. Now this workspace is actually using built using Foxy, so you can uh, the Visual Studio Code inspect, uh, uh, extension will introspect that workspace and try and determine what build environment it needs. And in this case, it correctly selected ROS2.foxy. So with that, we've installed ROS on Windows. We've installed the Visual Studio Code ROS extension inside of Visual Studio Code. We connected it to both the Windows side and WSL side. Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe to my blog, uh, YouTube, or on Odyssey. Thanks.